All right, let's look at chapter 28. Chapter 28 deals with the reproductive systems. So we're gonna start this off looking at meiosis. And meiosis is a process of making gametes. Now the first thing we're gonna talk about here is what a chromosome is. And chromosomes are coiled fibers of DNA and histones. Now histones are a protein that the DNA winds itself around. So chromosomes are only seen when the cell is ready to divide. Uh, and we humans, we have 46 chromosomes. So that 46 number is what is known as our diploid number. So that is a cell condition which there is only, uh, which there are two sets of chromosomes. Uh, you get one set of chromosomes from your mom and one set of chromosomes from your dad. Uh, this is found in somatic cells. So these are typical body cells. So a liver cell, brain cell, muscle cell. So not found in gametes. The other set of cells, the other number to be concerned with is what is known as a haploid number. So this is a cell condition which there's only one set of chromosomes. Uh, and that's seen in the gametic cells, the uh, egg and sperm cells. So you have two sets of chromosomes. Uh, and so when you make uh, a gamete through meiosis, you're only gonna give off one set of chromosomes to your offspring. All right, so your two sets of chromosomes, you get one set from your mom and one set from your dad. Uh, but when you give off chromosomes to your offspring, uh, it's typically a mixture of either your mom's or dad's chromosomes for the, but it's always one complete set. So let's take a look at mitosis versus meiosis. So in mitosis, we have, uh, we start off with one diploid cell having four chromosomes in it. And so each chromosome has what is known as sister chromatid. So, um, this side, uh, you know, so this side right here. So um, this side here it has the same genetic information as the other side, all right? And so when we separate those from each other, those are now called daughter chromosomes. So we start off with four chromosomes here, we separate sister chromatids, we now call daughter chromosomes, and those move into other cells here, all right? So we had four chromosomes here, one, two, three, four there, one, two, three, four there, all right? This is gonna be different from what we see uh, with meiosis. We're gonna start off with uh, one diploid cell. We're gonna have two nuclear divisions and that's gonna produce four haploid cells. Now, if we take a look at uh, our life cycle, uh, we're gonna start off with uh, adults uh, that are uh, diploid here. Uh, and then in their gametic cell, uh, we're gonna make gametes through meiosis. And then at fertilization, uh, we're gonna restore that diploid condition in the offspring uh, starting with that zygote, which is a fertilized egg. And then um, through mitotic divisions, mitosis, we're gonna get back to adults uh, where we can undergo meiosis again, all right? So let's look at DNA replication. So this is a chromosome before DNA replication. This is a chromosome after DNA replication. So here we have two sister chromatids. This side has all the same exact genetic information as the other side, all right? And then what we're gonna do in mitosis, we're gonna separate those sister chromatids from each other. So this goes into one cell and that one goes into the next cell. So that's what we see in mitosis. So we start off with um, uh, cells that, like this, a diploid, uh, so a duplicated chromosome. That's what this is called, a duplicated chromosome with two sister chromatids. And we're gonna separate those from each other in mitosis. We're also gonna separate them from meiosis as well, but that comes in the second part, all right? So, what we have to talk about now are what are known as homologous chromosomes. And these are two chromosomes that carry the same genes. So you're gonna get one of these from your mom and one from your dad. And so what I mean by carrying the same genes is if this gene was for hairy toes, well, that gene is for hairy toes, all right? Now, what you can have are alternate forms of a gene, which are known as alleles. So if this one chromosome is from mom and here, here's a gene for hairy toes, uh, this uh, chromosome could be from dad and this gene right there, it could also be for hairy toes, it could also be for non-hairy toes. So the, the gene there is whether you have hairy toes or not and you can have two different versions of that, okay? So um, if we move to the next slide, I just wanna show you this. Like, so we have 46 chromosomes all right, so what that means then, uh, when we talk about homologous pairs, is that we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. So here, right, 
chromosome number one from your mom, chromosome number one from your dad. Chromosome number two from your mom, chromosome number two from your dad. Chromosome number three from your mom, chromosome number three from your dad. And so on, all right? Until you get to the sex chromosomes, all right? So let's take a look at the steps in uh, meiosis. So here we have two nuclear divisions that are going to occur. We're gonna divide the nucleus twice. So in meiosis one here, all right? So we're gonna start meiosis one in prophase one. So this is showing prophase one here. All right, so here, you know, I'm just gonna look at the chromosomes. So the chromosomes now become visible and synapsis occurs. So synapsis is where homologous chromosomes pair up. So chromosome number one from your mom pairs up with chromosome number one from your dad. Chromosome number two from your mom pairs up with chromosome number two from your dad and so on, all right? And so what this creates then is what is known as a bivalent or a tetrad. So this structure here, the paired homologous chromosomes, uh, are known as a tetrad or a bivalent. Now what can occur here is what is known as crossing over. So where these guys meet here and here, they can actually exchange some genetic information there. All right? So, um, so that's the exchange of genetic material between two non-sister chromatids. All right, and so this is gonna have some important things here in the end. So just wanna point out, this is a sister chromatid of that. This is a sister chromatid of that. This is a non-sister chromatid of this. So if this is from mom, that's from dad, you can exchange some different alleles with each other, okay? So next is metaphase one, and that's where homologous chromosomes are lined up in the middle of the cell. All right, so we're gonna have 23 pairs of chromosomes lined up in the middle of the cell, all right? Next is anaphase one. So anaphase one, homologous chromosomes are separated from each other and they're gonna to move to opposite ends of the cell or opposite poles. In telophase one, um, you know, here those cells are divided into two independent cells and each cell contains 23 chromosomes. So we start off with 23 of this, we separate homologous chromosomes, 23 go this way, 23 go that way, all right? And 23 is the haploid number. So in meiosis two, what's gonna happen here is we're gonna start off with two haploid cells, each containing 23 chromosomes, and in this case, we're gonna separate sister chromatids from each other now. So it's very similar to mitosis. So in prophase two, or, uh, you know, chromosomes become visible, in metaphase two, chromosomes are lined up in the middle of the cell, all right? In anaphase two, sister chromatids are separated, and now they're gonna to move to opposite ends of the cell. So if this was our cells, 23 chromosomes would be moving this way, 23 that way, 23 moving this way, 23 moving that way. And then lastly, in telophase, uh, that's gonna end with four cells, each having 23 chromosomes. So half of our normal genetic information. So let's look at uh, genetic recombination, bisexual reproduction. So just moving through these here. So the first, uh, so the whole purpose of sexual reproduction is to increase uh, variation in the offspring. All right, and that's by recombining the genes. Now, when we talked about synapsis earlier, synapsis, you know, they just showed the chromosomes being right next to each other. But the reality is, is this is more accurate. They cross over in many different places, all right? In each place where they intermingle, that's where you can have crossing over of non sister chromatids. And so what this is going to do, so here we have crossing over occurring here, right? And each of these sister chromatids will end up in a different cell in the end. So by having this crossing over that occurs, each one of these chromosomes now ends up in a different cell and so here, what this does is now we have different combinations of genes in each gamete. So not, no two gametes would be the same then. So that's gonna increase uh, variation. Another way we increase variation in the offspring is through the independent alignment of the bivalent or the tetrad at metaphase one, okay? So this is looking at, uh, if you look at the bottom pair here, on this side, what we see in this possibility is that, let's say blue is dad, red is mom. In this case, right, uh, all the blue chromosomes go over to the left side, all the red ones go to the right side, all right? But it doesn't have to be that way. 
Uh, so what can happen here is, and this shows here the other possibility here, is that we could, these could have lined up with uh, blue on the left, or over here you can see red on the left, all right? And so this gives us a different combination of gametes here at the end. So over here you have dad's uh, large chromosome with mom's small one. Over here you have mom's large chromosome with dad's small one, all right? So it increases the variation. So you can make these gametes here or you can make these gametes here, all right? So two possibilities, right? Either dad's on the left or mom's on the left. But when we look at this, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. So to look at all the genetic variation that can occur in the gametes, you have to take so the, uh, all the chromosomal variations that can occur in the gametes, you have to take the two possibilities to the 23rd power. So if you take two to the 23rd, that's 8,366,608. So what that means is, is that the gamete that you got from your dad that made you was one in 8,366,608 of the different kinds of combinations of chromosomes that he could have made. And the gamete that you got from your mom was one in 8,336,608 of the possible combinations that she could have made. But we're not done. We got to take those together. So at fertilization, this is a combining of genetically different gametes. So you got to take those two gametes and put them together. So you take two to the 23rd, because there's two gametes, you take that to the second power. And that's all the possible combinations of the chromosomes that can occur in a zygote. And this is over 70 trillion possible combinations, all right? So uh, when I tell you that you are uh, completely unique, no one has ever existed like you before, and no one ever will again, is because your exact combination of genes has never existed before and will never again. And that math that I just told you, one in 70 trillion, oh, that's only for the combination of your parents' genes uh, you know, combination of your parents' chromosomes, not from all the possibilities that are out there. All right, let's move on to gametic genesis because that's what we're trying to do is make gametes, and that is the formation. Uh, so gametogenesis is the formation of gametes. Two types here, one is spermatogenesis, and that's a formation of sperm in the testes by meiosis. And so this is showing this here. So here, we start off with actually what is known as spermatogonium, that's going to divide into what is known as a primary spermatocyte, and that's where we start meiosis. All right, so the primary spermatocyte is going to undergo meiosis one, producing two secondary spermatocytes, which are haploid. These are going to go meiosis two, and we're going to get four spermatids, which are also haploid here. All right, and then we're going to go under uh, undergo a maturation process in which we get uh, four sperm cells, and in that, you know, they. Um, uh, lose their cytoplasm and grow a flagellated tail. All right, so just kind of like what we talked about with meiosis already. Now, when we look at um, uh, oogenesis, that's a formation of eggs in the ovaries, this uh, works a little differently. We get an oogonia, which is gonna make uh, a primary oocyte, and from here we're gonna begin our meiotic divisions. All right, so this is undergo, under, going to undergo meiosis one, so we produce a secondary oocyte in what is known as a polar body. And all I want you to do is notice the size difference between these two. That first polar body is much, much smaller. Oh, don't pay attention to this on the right side. We'll get to what that is later on. So that secondary oocyte uh, then undergoes, uh, is ovulated. So that's what this is showing over here. It gets ovulated, uh, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. So leaves the ovary, all right? now. That secondary oocyte will start meiosis II and stop at metaphase II, all right? And what has to happen is the sperm cell has to activate that secondary oocyte to complete meiosis II, all right? So let's say that occurs, right? So it gets ovulated, uh, gets uh, that um, sperm cell activates it. It will undergo meiosis II, creating a second polar body. And these polar bodies aren't used. They just get broken down by your body. All right, and so since that sperm cell is there, uh, we have fertilization occurring, and you get that zygote uh, occurring very quickly after that. So uh, in oogenesis, you don't make four gametes, you only make one gamete, uh, where in spermatogenesis, you make quite a bit. Uh, 